Ready? Let's talk about Coin Bureau. Is Guy this legendary crypto guru? Or is Guy this paid actor hired by an ex Goldman Sachs executive? Before we start today's video, I'd like to start off by saying that I actually really enjoy Guy's content. The purpose of this video is not to discredit Guy. If you haven't saw my previous exposed videos where I exposed Carl the Moon Boy's Costa scams, or crypto banner in his rug pulls, you should check him out. But I don't think that guy is anything like these two clowns. So let's dive into all things Coin Bureau and let's see what Coin Bureau is working with under the hood. Ready? Let's dive deep. I may look a lot like Vin Diesel's better looking brother or a more jacked version of Arnold Schwarzenegger. But what I am not is a financial advisor. Some people might even call me this woke, empty house, good looking dude with a great bod, family friendly, PG third effing teen. But let's get one thing straight, cupcake. Financial advisor, this guy is not, but a gosh damn detective he's turning himself into. So if you guys dig these exposed videos, if you could do me a favor and Will Smith that like button before we get started, I'd be greatly appreciative. If you're ready for this, buckle up your seatbelts, dial in your diamond hands, and let's dive effing deep. First things first, Let's talk about who owns and runs the Coin Bureau YouTube channel because it's very odd that Guy, this legendary crypto guru, is still promoting Ethereum along with a dozen more crypto projects that by design will never be able to evolve to meet the demands of global world adoption, but he still continues to shield them like they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Why is that? If we take a look at this clip from Crypto Exposed, we can start to get a good idea or a good understanding of who owns and who runs the Coin Bureau YouTube channel. Guy from Coin Bureau is not who I thought he was. Some of my subscribers did bring up something controversial about Guy that I had yet to find out. So what's the big controversial reveal? As shown in this Reddit thread, Guy is a paid actor and unlike what I originally thought was not part of the family founding team of Coin Bureau, but instead joined during its original phases. The original founder is Nick Puckrin, an ex-Goldman Sachs banker. There's nothing wrong with them choosing to use Guy, if that's even his real name, as the face of the channel, as long as they don't use the trust their audience has in Guy to start shilling scams. On top of Guy's response to the Reddit post, you can learn more about him on the Coin Bureau's website and on their Reddit. The next part of this story, however, did raise bigger concerns. Concerns. The Reddit post also shares a lot more detail on V3 Digital, the company behind Coin Bureau, a marketing agency that generates revenue from affiliate marketing and other services. So how is this different from what BitBoy Crypto does? Well, despite the post alluding to the agency being available to shill for the highest bidder, after searching both Twitter and YouTube, I still can't find any videos of Coin Bureau pushing any sort of scam. This is very different from people like BitBoy Crypto, who has been caught promoting multiple scam projects in exchange for money, or Crypto Banter, who has been caught pumping and dumping coins on his audience. Pretty crazy, right? I had no idea that Guy was a paid actor. Pretty crazy to think that everything promoted by the Coin Bureau YouTube channel most likely had an outside agenda. Although this may not sit right from a moral or ethical standpoint, I give Coin Bureau credit because everything that the guy does seems to be legal. I think the better question to ask is who is Nick Puckrin and why does an ex Goldman Sachs executive own an undercover crypto YouTube channel? Let's start off by diving into Nick Puckrin and then we'll dive into V3 Digital who offers a pay to shill service on the Coin Bureau YouTube channel. If we pull up this article wrote about Coin Bureau that was published by VentureBeat.com, we can see that the article was wrote by Nick Puckrin. After reading this article, we can see how someone with Nick's clout and resources could easily push a media narrative in any direction that they would like. Obviously, I'm not saying that they're doing this, but it's very interesting to see who's really pulling the strings behind the Coin Bureau YouTube channel. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the word Goldman Sachs reminds me a lot of Wall Street, and it's hard for me to wanna trust anything that's owned by somebody that used to work on Wall Street and is in bed with Goldman Sachs legacy players, bankers, Wall Street, regulators. As much as I love guys' content, it really makes me wonder. Can you guys do me a favor? Drop some comments below. Let me know what you guys think about this video so far. And if you could hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. 
be greatly appreciative. So I don't know about you guys, but again, it makes it hard for me to trust anything I've heard on the Coin Bureau YouTube channel, which really sucks because the content produced is really top of the line from an educational standpoint. The hardest part is trying to distinguish why Coin Bureau has yet to cover projects like if we swing over to Reddit, we can see a post that was made roughly eight months ago by Green Poison Ivy titled Coin Bureau is a paid actor that works for V3 Digital, a marketing company that is a pay to market, aka a shill for certain information and coins. Coin Bureau is an actor that works for V3 Digital, a marketing company that can be paid to market, aka shill certain information and coins. Take a look at Coin Bureau's TOS. The first line specifically states that Coin Bureau is a brand of V3 Digital. It's a very elaborate shill, but nonetheless, shill a shill, and it's no wonder that Coin Bureau has been intentionally getting information wrong about Elgrand, AKA Elgo's clawback, backdoor, etc., one of Solana's main competitor who he's very bullish on, which makes me think that someone who has a big bag of Solana has been paid by V3 Digital to shill Solana and spread disinformation about other competitors. And then we can see right here, Guy is a paid actor. Nick Puckrin is founder of a UK-based cryptocurrency news and educational site called Coin Bureau. He previously worked in investment banking at Goldman Sachs in London. And if we take a look at this Coinbase article right here, Coinbase Big Week, we can see who actually wrote this article, Nick Puckrin. We can see here where they're trying to shield the narrative about Coinbase being able to launch security tokens. Why is this Coinbase announcement important? Which security tokens will we see on Coinbase? And if we scroll through here on another Reddit post, I could really only find this one article or any information about who Nick Puckrin really is. And if we click on this article, the article is now lost and you cannot find it. Another amazing comment down here, you can remove all the mentions of specific coins and tokens from Coin Bureau's videos. So you still have something that's worth watching, which isn't something you can say about buying XYZ coin. It's going to be 100X. These type of videos, which make up a vast majority of crypto content. The thing about BitBoy is that he has these crypto giveaways where you need to subscribe and follow him in a bunch of social medias to have a chance to win. So many people subscribe just for that. Coin Bureau's growth has been more organic in my opinion. Coin Bureau doesn't even run ads on his channel and doesn't beg for subscribers like BitBoy always does. I'll agree. And if we take a look on Google, the only things that I can see published by Nick Puckrin is this article over here about top four tether alternatives, Bitcoin futures manipulation, Bitcoin futures manipulation, crypto friendly Robin Hood under the hood payments for order flow, Karavi and Bulletproof, how Monaro is improving privacy, 51% attacks, the deathly scenario for blockchain, BitMEX liquidations, how to avoid getting wrecked, and Coinbase Big Week Venture Beat. And judging by the research that I've done into Nick, this guy likes staying in the shadows. I don't think he likes his name being out there. And he figured out a way to basically promote, grow, and run a YouTube channel using Guy as a paid actor to push out whatever messages or whatever narrative he would like. Now, the difference between me, BitBoy, Coin Bureau, and all these other big YouTube channels is they have teams of people. They have researchers, they have developers, they have editors, they have thumbnail creators. I'm just a one-man team guy, so I can only do so much research myself. If anybody watching this video has any more information on Nick Puckrin or V3 Digital, that you guys would like to send to me on Twitter. My username is at Shots by Meta. I would love to have that information and I'm working on producing better, more educational content and trying to expose and pull back the curtain and see who's really pulling the strings because there's always, always, always somebody up above you that knows more that is pulling strings that you're not aware of. Now, the part that really gets me with Guy is the type of educational content he's producing. The narrative that he's trying to push that certain blockchains may or may not be the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's always just the educational narrative. But if you take a step back and look at big picture, it's bringing attention and it's putting a spotlight on certain projects that I guess Nick Puckrin wants to pay guy to talk about. Scammers around the world took home a record 14 billion in cryptocurrency in 2021, thanks to a large part in the rise of DeFi. Losses from cryptocurrency related crimes rose by 79% from 2020. Cryptocurrency theft has increased 516% from 2020 to $3.2 billion worth of crypto hacks. A total of 72% of stolen funds were taken from DeFi protocols. And this comes from the Chain Analysis 2022 Cryptocurrency Crime Report. If we take a look at this hacker report, we can see the total hacks just in Q1 of 2022. This is just Q1. Ethereum, there was 635 million. Solana, there was 396 million. Binance, there was 100 million. Other 57 million. Polygon, Polygon in 2021 was 650 million. 
And if we take a look at this crime report, new all-time crime highs, $14 billion worth of crypto was stolen in 2021. And if you analyze this report, you can see that there's one thing in common. 70% of the hacks came from the DeFi ecosystem and over 50% was from code exploits. So this is where it's going to get a little bit difficult because you guys know that I'm a very big maxi on this one blockchain, but I don't want this video to be biased. But let's just say that there's this one blockchain that created a new coding language. And this new coding language was designed specifically to build blockchains at scale. Guy puts out a lot of educational content. But a majority of the blockchains that he previously spoke about, it's starting to become overwhelmingly obvious that these blockchains are not designed to keep your money safe. With the overwhelming amount of hacks that have happened in the last couple months, and they all boil back down to, or a majority of them boil back down to the coding language, that lets us know that the coding language that these blockchains were built in, it just isn't safe because no legacy players are going to want to move millions of dollars on these blockchains if they can't keep their money safe. But because I'm such a big maxi on this blockchain, it's going to come off in a negative light. So I'm not even going to mention the blockchain's name. I'm just going to explain it and you guys can do your own research. In the world of blockchain, there is two type of coding languages. One is Turing complete and the other is Turing incomplete. One allows you to build loops. So when you need to spin up something like nodes and you need those nodes to be redundant and you need to be able to spin up a new node instantly, if one node fails, you need a looping coding language. You need a coding language that can constantly just loop itself, which is very computational intensive. You need a lot of resources and that's why Ethereum gas fees are very, very expensive because you're utilizing the resources, the computational power of that network. You're paying a miner to take assets from one wallet address and move them over to another in a safe, secure and decentralized way. Now, everything that's built on top of Ethereum is called a layer two. Now, these layer twos need to use the same coding language as the underlying layer one. Now, they don't have to because of things like EVMs. Problem is that Ethereum's coding language is Turing complete. You need a Turing incomplete coding language that prevents people from programming in bugs and backdoor loopholes and just bad code. And the bad code stems from the fact that Ethereum and Solidity and Rust do not use what's called formal verification. So if I was looking to build a blockchain, I would look at the options available and I'd go, can't really build it in Rust, can't build it in Ethereum. Cardano did it right. Cardano used Haskell, very, very smart. Also Turing incomplete coding language, Haskell did it right. I wanna say Ergo wrote their own Ergo script, new coding language, they've done it right. Now there's this other blockchain out there. Again, I won't say the name of it, but they've created their own coding language called Pact and PACT uses what's called formal verification. Formal verification is a technology created by Microsoft, and it's a way for basically a computer program to self-audit itself by testing for failed outputs. So when I wanna fact check something and I wanna prove that you know one plus one equals two, I need to prove every way that it's not possible to do it. Taking a look at the maze here on this screen, if I wanted to complete this maze and I wanted to tell you exactly what the fastest way to go from start to finish I would literally have to measure each move and then try to do the maze every way possible. And then after I figured out every way that I could go from start to finish and get to the end of that maze, I would have to measure each increment to make sure that this way is the fastest route. Z3 technology analyzes every single output. Z3 analyzes that code and determines if there's any way that that code could be malicious or could be bad. And if it finds a bug, it gives you an alert. It says, here's your bug. Then it gives you a message that actually displays how you should probably fix that bug. So there's now this blockchain that solved a majority of the problems in the space. Coin Bureau has also made a TikTok video about it. He's wrote a really amazing, amazing article about this blockchain. And he's told us that he was gonna make a YouTube video on it, but yet he has not. And from a technology or an educational standpoint, if that's what Coin Bureau's YouTube channel is all about is education, there is one blockchain that is so advanced that it makes all of these other blockchains kind of look like child's play. It makes blockchain safe again. And that is the biggest problem in this industry. And this is what limits us from global adoption and real adoption of blockchain and blockchain technology. You need to be able to keep people's money safe. You need to be able to keep it secure. You need to be able to do that in a decentralized manner. And when you hit the holy grail, AKA the blockchain trilemma and you solve it, and not only do you solve it, but you get a patent on it, kind of makes it hard for any competition or anybody to compete with you. We all love Coin Bureau, huge fan of his channel. And I wish, I wish it was just a legit channel, but unfortunately that's not the case. So now we have to really step back and go, okay, is Guy really giving us the best educational content or is he just looking out for his own bags? Do me a favor guys, drop some comments below. Let me know what you guys think and uh, maybe we'll make a follow-up video. Hey you. 
don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up, and then come join us live on my second YouTube channel. Love you guys.